right your own install tool. Um, well, first of all, why would you want to do that? That's the question people usually ask. Well, in my view, there are like three kinds of build processes. Well, three, three groups of modules with different requirements on their build tool. First of all, there's simple modules, which is like pretty much all pure pro modules, and actually even most XS modules probably too, that don't need anything in specific. Um, basically, for this class of modules, anything will work fine. It really doesn't matter if you use Make Maker, Modules Build, or anything else. It just works. Uh, there are two other groups of uh, modules, however, that um, are a bit more complicated. Uh, those are... Uh, oh, this is not very readable. The resolution sucks. Um, first of all, there's, there are modules that use something non-standard, but that occurs a lot. Um, and there's another group of modules that does something really unique. Uh, in my personal opinion, uh, the sec both Make Maker and Module Build really suck at the second category. Making real extensions, I mean, you can customize both of them, but making like reusable extensions just sucks balls. They're very poor at it, and I actually think there's there are a lot of problems that are should be easy but are not. For example, alien uh, dis distributions. It should be easy to make just to make alien distributions because most of them are very similar in what they do. It's building some external module. But it isn't and you turn out to um, um, do a lot of stuff at custom that you will, that it's not really necessary. Also, um, we need to make, well, MakeMaker was really not this, it was not obviously not designed to be extended, and it's a bit of a later on hack added to it. Module build was designed to be customizable, but really not designed to be properly extendable. And that really turns out to be far more difficult than it should be, in my opinion. Um, anyway, oh. There are two, okay, for, there are two protocols for module builders, and I'm sure all of you will know them, so there are a makefile.pl and there's a build.pl. I'm sure you've all used them. Um, in this presentation, I'm gonna, exp I'm, focusing on explaining uh, build.pl and then explain what the difference with makefile.pl. There are three reasons for why I do this. Um, the first of it is that there's actually a specification being written for build.pl. So, so it's actually written down what it's supposed to do, which makes life a lot easier. <laughs> uh, secondly, it's pure Perl which means I can show you code examples and you, all of you will actually understand it. Because not everyone understands make and not everyone... Well, shell is a bit more widely understood, but still not everyone here will know a lot of shell. And thirdly, uh, well, I, I wrote a build PL implementation, so I kind of know all the corner cases and other ugly uh, bits. Nowadays, and even module builds uh, patch manager. Don't ask me why. Anyway, uh, the, build, the specification uh, defines um, three diff three things: a set of commands, uh, configuration, and where and installation uh, locations. Um, the commands are basically basically just four commands. Configuration, building, testing, and installing. Um, again, this should be familiar to all of you if you've ever built my distro by hand. Though maybe nowadays people just use cpen, only use cpen clients, and that's a good thing. Um, 
as you see, they're just commands and they can have some arguments. Uh, make, it's built, it's, these come out, build PL, it can do more than this specification, but this is the subset that's used by CPEN clients, and this is the subset that you actually need to, to build and install modules. So that's why this is specified and the rest is just do whatever you want. Uh, Makefile.pl looks very, very similar in use. The commands are pretty much the same. The arguments are slightly different, but most of the time compatible. Um, yeah. So enough of that. Let's get some code examples. Configuration in BuildPL is actually turns out to be really, really easy, almost trivial. Uh, is that a pointer? No, whatever. Um, there's strictly speaking only two requirements in this case. You can use your mouse. Hmm? You can use your mouse. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Uh, you have to build. You have to write the build script, and you have to store your arguments somewhere because you need them later. Strictly. Uh, by the way, make executable is. Hilariously non portable. <laughs> the, maybe some of you have an idea of what it does on Unix and on Windows. I, I challenge you, what does it do on VMS? <laughs> it's supposed to be build.com instead of build, because otherwise it doesn't work because it doesn't find it when you say build. It's one of those things you bump into. Um, but of course, this is this is only the bare minimum, and in reality, there are there are at least two other things you also want to do. The first of them is writing a my meta. The build PL specification actually mandates it, but in practice, CPM clients will accept it without because of backwards compatibility. And the other thing is that some people, for some perverse reason, like it when you build PL. Specified set tells you you haven't installed some dependency, even though your CPEN client handles that fine, and you don't really need that unless you're doing it by hand. Make uh, configuration in Makefile.pl superficially looks very, very similar, and it roughly does the same. This is only superficial because in reality. Um, in makefile.pl, the configuration is the only stage where Perl is really in charge of what's happening. So basically, you have to plan everything ahead in this phase. And everything you haven't prepared in this phase is just not going to happen. Because you have to write out the makefile that's in charge of normal later phases. So this actually turns out to be most pretty much all of, of the code of makefile.pl implementation is writing out the makefile. <clears throat> building. Building is, at one hand, stage where, when, when that's where the real, act, real thing happens, and on the other hand, it's also the shortest section in the specification. Because it's really just build stuff, put it somewhere so it can be tested and installed later. And specification it really doesn't care how you do that. It is important, though, that you put stuff in the right place because CPAN clients, for example, can rely on modules being in lib lib and lib arc because if they don't install it but use it for like build dependencies, then they put that in the file. Then. If you break that, then you break the toolchain. So you shouldn't do that. Um, well, this is a snippet of uh, another snippet of uh, module build tiny. Um, building pure Pro modules is ridiculously easy. It's just copying some. Uh, you're really just copying some PM files and then running auto split on it. If you're silly enough to use auto split, I'm actually considering just making this copy and ignore auto split because <laughs> I think it's evil. But apparently, not everyone's doing it. Um, and of course, you have to make uh, scripts <laughs> um, executable. 
Um, in make. Building is actually the one thing that make, make is actually really good at, unsurprisingly. Uh, for testing, it's not very helpful. For installing, it's rather non-helpful, if you ask me. I mean, if, you have, if you're interested, you should check the make file it produces. Installing is like really, really weird. But make is pretty, pretty good. It's really good at building. And well, if you're familiar with make, this should be a home run. <clears throat> testing. Well, uh, testing turns out to be quite easy too because there's actually very good toolchain support for doing this. Uh, this is another example from uh, Magical Tiny. Uh, you just create the tap harness object and you give it, you toss it a bunch of uh, test files and it will take care of the rest. Um, by the way, you see the color is minus the SD out. If people ask me what's the one thing Logical Tiny does better than the others, <laughs> it's that. It gives colorful output when testing. It's also the only thing it does better. <laughs> um, yeah, this is this is this has become pretty much trivial and actually you can do tons of more stuff using tap harness like parallel testing, you can archive it, you can do convert it to other formats and then put it in Jenkins or whatever the first thing you want to do. Um, yeah, this is easy. And actually, tap harness is what's uh, basically the back end of Prove. And if you do this in makefile.pl, you would probably just use Prove for this. And it boils down to exactly the same. Installing. In the build in the build.pl spec, installing is actually the largest part. It's I think about 40% of the spec is really dedicated to uh, installing. And that's without prefix, because prefix is in spec at all. Because no one has any description of how prefix works, because I'm not sure if anyone really understands how prefix works. Um, it has some really, really scary edge cases, especially if you've overwritten the configuration keys and it starts half using that. Um, yeah. And it's also logical that, in a way, that this is the largest part of the build PL spec because this is the part, this is the end result of uh, the process. If modules get installed in the wrong place, people will get mad. Because, well, that kind of happened when, mod when module build was introduced, it didn't support prefix, but created this whole base, which was yeah, kind of a good point in that being a lot more sane than prefix, but still people get mad if modules tend end up in different places than you want them to be. Mm. <clears throat> this turned out to be so complicated that I took a chainsaw and created Exitos install pop which is really just uh, the part of module builds that uh, did this. Um, and, sorry. Well, basically, you, you just pass it all arguments, and it will tell you this has to ha happen there, and you don't really want to know more of it. Because it's really <coughs> the... If it would have been, been rewritten, then it probably some large parts of it would have just not have been in it at all. But for backwards compatibility, it really all, all of it has to be in. Um, uh, but yeah, um, also the install here is just actually those install. That's four since five twelve. So and if I would wear, if, 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 yeah. This part is really, really messy in make because basically make is a programming language without an if statement. <laughs> <laughs> so anything other than should this file be built or not turns out to be very non-trivial. It's really good at making that decision and it's really, really crappy at making all other decisions. So if I were to write... Um, uh, if I were to 
to write a um, new Make Maker, then I would probably just reuse this uh, Qtils install paths and uh, not re-implement that in Make because it's it's, it's kind of silly. It's, it's really a lot of code to do something that should be rather simple. <coughs> okay, um, deployment. Deployment of a new uh, install tool is actually well, when module build was first introduced, it was like, well, sysadmin should just install module build first and then it will work fine. Which made a lot of people unhappy because when they hadn't installed that, then, you know, their CPAN broke. Um, so therefore, there's... Um, the, the real solution for that is configure requires. And there's a backwards compatible uh, solution, uh, which is including. Configure requirement requires this uh, mega uh, key, which basically says install this module before you try to run anything. So you can say this configure requires module tiny, and then module then cpan client will install module tiny before even before configuration, and then everything will work out fine. The problem with this is that all all cpan clients don't support this. It's added to the uh, it's added in 5.10.1, it's shipped with a CPAN client that does support it. Uh, if you want, it, it does work on other Pro versions, but you have to upgrade your CPAN, which not everyone does. So, you should assume that this is going to break in 5.8, basically. That's a fair assumption. But, for, but if you don't care about 5.8, then... I don't care about 5.8. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Done. Finished. Upgrade. <laughs> the other solution. Pay someone else. <laughs> <laughs> the other solution is including the module builder in the distribution. This is, for example, what module install does. This turns out to work pretty much anywhere for even more unreasonable versions of Pro than 5.8. It has, however, one. It, it is, however, very unfriendly from a using CPAN point of view because it means either you have should use no dependencies, which just sucks, or you have to include all your dependencies, which sucks too. I've experimented with doing that with module tiny, and the end result I had a 70 line module with 7,000 lines of dependencies. <laughs> 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 not very tiny. It's not yeah. very, really, very funny. <laughs> Well, by now, 6,000 of those are in core today. But they're not in core as of 5.8, so I have to ship them anyway. Yeah, but they make it just time shift themselves, really, boy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so this, it works, and I'm probably going to ship module tiny itself with this, but I'm not going to do that with any module that uses module tiny, because well, that way at least I offer a way to install it on 5.8. But any other modules, they'll just have to figure out themselves because that's their own problem. Um, authoring. Well, basically, uh, for module tiny, um, I used very much a split of, um, approach to authoring, which means the build, so the install tool, and the authoring tool are different things, um, which I think is a good idea. And Diesel was like does pretty exactly the same from the other side, which is just an authoring tool. Ah, two more slides. Um, well, basically I wrote the diesel plugin, and if you skip out the boilerplate, then this is pretty much the entire implementation of the diesel module. Which really shows... Why is Why is base code? Ah. The blade projector. It's, it's the projector's fault. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, anyway, it's really just add the configure required, add module tiny to configure requires, add a two line build.pl that's just use module tiny built. And that's all, really. I mean, I could, I could write my own authoring tool for module build tiny, but <laughs> this is 25 lines in total including the boilerplate, and it works better than anything I write myself, so why should I do that? What do you mean by the tool? Um, the tool for like writing, like for this 
Well, for building the tarball and okay. everything. Um, yeah. Which might make it us yeah. make, make our module build from that for you. Um, but yeah. the module tiny, I didn't, didn't, there are two very different things. Yes. And basically, module tiny, I'm just loading the beta file and relying on the information in there and not having any configuration at all. Uh, one more slide. Um, for the future, what I really hope is going to happen is that this is the 90% is so easy that CPAN clients should handle this themselves because it's just copying a few files most of the time, so why not? Um, any questions? I have an answer question. Uh, Neil, uh, you asked, so why am I doing module build? My well, answer for you is because I want to steal it. Brains! <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, that. <laughs> Any other questions? I had a random thought, but I forgot what yeah, I did. It was shut, so I will. <laughs> <laughs>